This is um. Okay, <laughs> ready? This Talk. Is it ready? Yeah, yeah, it's recording. Is it recording right now? Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna tell a story. Um, my name is Claudius McStevens. Right now, um, I. This story is a is sort of personal to me. <laughs> uh, sorry, I try not to cough into the mic. I've got a little code right now. Um, right, right, right. Yeah. Um, I wish you would understand me more. You know, more. <laughs> Excuse me, excuse me, sorry. I'm trying to tell my story right now. The producer is being very, very irritating. Okay, I'm getting the thumbs up. I'm going to go ahead and resume. I, okay, this, to, okay, a little bit of preface. Um, I have four gangs in my neighbourhood. Now, one of them is called the, the, uh, oh my God, it's on the tip of my tongue. It's called the, uh, the, uh, the, the blue hatchets. <laughs> The second one is called the, uh, the brown saws. <laughs> the third one is called the, uh, the boxes of mice. And the fourth one is called the USB ports. Um, and, okay, so the USB ports and the boxes of mice are gang rivals. Keep that in mind. And then the blue hatchets and the brown... Oh, right, what was it? Brown souls. Yeah, souls. Thank you. The brown souls are rivals. Now, the blue or the uh the rodents uh the boxes of mice, there we go. Um the boxes of mice. Now they teamed up with the blue hatchets and they came to my door, they said, Would you mind funding our next kill? <laughs> and I <laughs> Now, in, keep in mind, in high school, I had taken four years, four straight years of AP kill. I am an experienced cure, but I'm not about to fund somebody else's kill. That's like the first rule of AP kill, you know, the curriculum. If you've ever taken AP kill, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, that's, that's all you need to know. Like yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, let's keep it quiet if you want to, you know. Um... And so, uh, instead of giving them funding, I gave him my old broken TV. Does not work. You press the power button, nothing happens. Or you plug something in, no sparks. No sparks whatsoever. Show says bugs. Um, you, uh, you put, uh, you know, just any sort of audio output, audio input, uh, remote control, hook up anything. Uh, yeah, I mean, nothing's going to happen if you just... If, no matter what you do, it's get broken all the way. Not gonna work, no matter what. Thank you. Um, and so I gave him that. He said, "This is not gonna work. We cannot fund our next queue." And I said, "What?" Now, keep in keep in mind, this man has a criminal record of about ten years. Okay, ten years of straight killing, no breaks. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't eat. He just kills. That's about ten trillion people. And um, you, uh, he put the uh, so he put the old TV in his car. He took it down to the dump. He put it in the dump, and he, uh, he <laughs> and and then he came back with the change from the dump. He got change. He got he got money for putting an old broken TV in the dump. And I said to him, you know, "Do you know what I said to him?" What? I said to him. If you come to my house one more time, now I want you to know before I say the next part of what I said, I want you to remember that I took AP Kill for four straight years in high school. Um, I should say primary school. Is that what you call it? Is that what you call it in, in um, yeah, Britain? Are you in Britain? Are you British? From Lithuania. Okay. Um, so yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Okay, so in high school, <laughs> um, I uh, yeah, I went to an American high school. Oh my god, yeah, okay, there he is, right there. He wants my boxes. He wants his boxes of mice back. So I gave him an entire box of mice. And it was filled to the brim. I mean, teeming, absolutely teeming. Oh yeah, it was overflowing. Um, overflowing. <laughs> he was overflowing with mice and. Now keep in mind, 
You need to keep a lot of things in mind in life. Okay, keep that in mind. That's what I want you to keep in mind. <laughs> <laughs> if there's one thing you're going to keep in mind, it's that you need to keep multiple things in mind. Um, yeah! And so, yeah, so I said to this guy who had brought this old this money back from the dump where he dumped my old TV instead of money, and I said, keep it. You know, it's yours. I gave you the old TV. And he said, no, I want you to have it. I ended up getting funding on the way here for my next kill. And I said, what difference does that make? You're about to make another kill in about four days. And he said, yeah, I'll come by then. I said, excuse me, nor, nor are you warned. I mean, the nerve of this man. I, he told me that there was a fourth, you know, a fourth person that he was going to kill. There was a fourth day. There was a full, a full, full days, full, full days that he would, that he would wait before coming to my I mean, that's not even like, that's, that's, I don't, I can't do multiplication because I, went, I stopped after high school and my entire schedule was filled up with ABQ, so I never took a math class. Um, but, it's, yeah, and so I told him, I mean, are you kidding me? I slammed the door in his face, I broke his nose in the process, he had his, his face very, very fine to my doorway, has got, my do way. That's kind of how they do it. They did it in the gangs back then, uh, and now about three years later, it's a bit different. But I um, and yeah, and sorry, I called the police. Uh, the police took him to the jail, and uh, they gave him five dollars, and then they released him after six years. Um, keep in mind, this was three years ago, so I can see into the future. Three years, you can presume from that statement. Um, okay, uh, that's my story. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll give it back to the producer right now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow, what a wonderful story. Now, um, wow, I'm just speechless. What a wonderful depiction of life in a gang. And what I really love about that is your personal kind of Input? Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah How so you yeah. give your own take on the story. And what I really like is how... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Please come back. <clears throat> yeah. That's, that's good. That concludes our late July sea salt time. <laughs> um, la <laughs> wonderful gathering. <laughs> Thank you for being here. No, I know. <laughs> okay, everybody, welcome back from the break. Um, we have a new guest. His name is Pippin McBlurg. He's coming all the way from Sussex, England. Let's give it up for Pippin. Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I'm just here from Fafik. Uh... And I was talking to a lady from there. She was saying to me, Pippin, you need to not do what you do. And I said to her, I said to her face, Mum, you cannot tell me what I want to be when I grow up. I'm grown up right now and I'm doing what I want to be. So, I thought I ought to tell you this story in case you want to be whatever you want to be when you grow up. And that's the whole moral of that story. It's just a little bit big story. Now we get into the real story. <clears throat> so I was walking down the street and I noticed these big diggers, you know, in somebody's backyard. They were digging up a hole and this old lady came out screaming, what are you doing? And I said, what are you doing? And she said, they're digging a hole in my backyard. And I said to her, looked her straight in the eyes, and I said, madam, got to calm yourself. Think about what you're saying. Turn around, go back in your house, call the police, get them out of your yard. You shouldn't be letting people dig in your backyard. Okay? She said to me, I don't understand. Why are they 
egg in my backyard. And I said, I said, madam, 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 please, please, please be reasonable. Listen to me. Look at those guys. They're not going to stop. Okay? You've got to go out there, take them by force. <laughs> <laughs> Hijack their machines. You know what I'm saying? Then what we did next will shock you. It truly will. But before I get into that, I ought to tell you about how I got there. One time I was in an aeroplane over the ocean, over the English Channel, <laughs> gazing out upon the masts <laughs> of the ships. The different ships being sailboats, yachts, and various types of different ships. That's what my grandfather used to call them. He'd say, yeah, Pippin, you've got to go in the ships if you want to be a real seafaring man. And I said to him, Grandpa, lower your voice, you're inside. He yelled, kept yelling until he died, 95. <laughs> Straight from birth, yelling and yelling. Anyway, <clears throat> in the airplane, it was my grandpa, my grandma, me, my cousin, my sister, my friend, my other friend, my friend's friend, my friend's cousin, my sister, my cousin, my other cousin, my cousin twice removed, his friend, his sister, and the flight attendant, who is also my brother's friend, and the two pilots. I don't know them. Yeah, that's what I said. Basically, the airplane landed safely. No too good. <clears throat> no too bad, sorry. Um, it was just from uh, a different country. I think it was America. America is a certain place in my heart. Uh, wonderful place. But before I get into that, I'd like to tell you how I got to the street in which the grandma lived. And she said to me, she said, Pippin. How do I get these people out of my backyard? And I said, you got to take a boat force, right? You remember that? Keep it in your mind. Remember that? Hold on to it. Get it? Yeah? Got it? Good. Now, let's go and take it. Now, I lied a little bit. I am actually from Australia, and I moved to Canada, and I moved to Britain. But I will tell you one thing. I don't like a bully. Bullies? Worst thing. They're in the water. They're the horrible, horrible dinging, ringing sound. Boys are the worst. Now, I tell you this because the diggers digging a hole in their backyard. And I tell you, I tell you, random is not funny, but this was the most random thing I've ever seen. Digging a hole for a buoy. Ever seen that? No. Go on a field with water. Put a buoy in his lightest big yard. And I fed to them. You go and put a buoy in the big yard because a buoy is for the ocean. And they said there is no ocean in the United Kingdom. <laughs> not the inland, not the outland, not the save. <laughs> not the side of land, not the other side. Scotland, maybe. Yeah, you could get an ocean in there. But I'll tell you the real thing. This lady was furious. She said to me, get these men out of my big yard. And I got them out. I told the guy who was the head honcho, he was driving the tractor. He said, I will not stand up for you. He was talking to the other mate. And the other mate said, what do you mean? And that's when I approached and I said, you guys got to get out of this lady's backyard. She said to me, thank you so much. What can I do to repay you? And I said, I'd like to buy two airplane tickets. Go to Canada. She said, why? And I said, I can't stand the heat here in Britain. She says, okay, if that's what you want, how many do you need? And I said, 25. For my cousin, my brother, my brother's friend, my brother's cousin, my, br my other sister, my sister, my one sister, my two sister, my third sister, the pilot's friend, the pilot's other friend, the flight attendant, the brother, the mother, the grandfather, and the grand cousin. <clears throat> All this in the span of two hours. So she got it, and I hopped on the plane straight to Canada. First thing I saw when I got there, keep in mind I am looking for the rare piece of parchment on which I'd like to write my memoir. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've lived a very full life. I'm 24, and I would like to die soon. <laughs> 
before I get into that, I'd like to tell you a little bit about who I am. Hi, my name is Pippin McQuarrick. Anyway, <clears throat> getting into this, I got in the airplane straight out to Canada. First thing I noticed, no people. Nobody lives there. No people, no sounds. It was just a completely blank slate. And I said, I don't have a parchment because this is the parchment. So, I did whatever I, any other man would do. Hopped on the plane and went back to Britain. <laughs> Too different. I didn't like it. <laughs> one thing I'll tell you, change is not good. I'll tell you one thing. The first thing I saw when I went to Canada, Canada is a horrible, horrible place. Orwell, Orwellian, George Orwell. Well, well, that's what he said. Put it in a well, lock it up tight, put the well in another well, in the well, in the lock box, in the bottom of the container, in the bottom of the ocean. Yeah? That's what I said. He's Australian. Now, besides this, he had many other mantras and such. And I told him, I told him, he was my grandfather. And I told him, grandfather, and he said, meh. And he's hard of hearing, <laughs> can hear very well. And he said, Now listen, Pippin, you've got many talents, but the one thing you ever need is a brain, okay? And I said, Okay, Grandpa, I don't know what you're telling me, though. And he said, Well, the one thing I need you to know is it. And then he died right there. He didn't ever finish. To this day, I wonder what he told me. I've been trying to figure that out. And I've been travelling country to country. As I told you, I lived in Australia, then I moved to Canada, then I moved to Britain. Never been able to settle anywhere. My whole life. Met people. Forged relationships. Good friends. I've had to sever those ties in favour of finding the Holy Grail. Being the last word that my grandpa spoke <laughs> to me. <laughs> it gives me tears just thinking about it. And I, I, I really, I just need to tell everybody listening to this, when your grandpa tells you a word, you don't know what it means. You don't know where it's going to go. When he tells you, but you can be anything you want. You say, no, you're wrong, and I can be anything I want. That is the true moral of life. Anyway, I hopped on the plane and said to the old lady, thank you very much. That's what she said to me, and I said, thank you very much, madam. And I hopped on the plane to Canada, got out, got back in, went to Britain, I packed up my bags, went to Iceland. Iceland is the land of green. Beautiful. Got to Iceland. Got at the plane, saw that no people there virtually. Got back in the plane, went back to Britain, stayed there. And that's where I've been for the past 25 years. And I'll tell you one thing, it doesn't get easier. <laughs> the old lady still has holes in the big yard. Just keep coming back every month. They're, man, we got to dig this hole. And she says, no, please don't. And I say, get out of her backyard. And they say, stop talking like that. You sound like an Australian. And I say to them, I will not take that from you or my grandpa or my grandma or my sister or my cousin or my other sister or the two pilots in the plane or the flight attendant or my brother or my other brother or my brother friend or my brother's cousin or my great cousin twice removed. I will not take it from you. Certainly not, sir. And he said to me, do you think it's raining? I said, no, we're inside. You're digging a hole inside a backyard. She invited you in. The least you could do is not lie to me. This has been a wonderful tangent. But I think the main thing about the story is how wonderful Britain is. Any experiences you have have no meaning anywhere but Britain. And that truly is, I think, the true meaning of what it means to be a connoisseur of parchment. Thank you for this. Wow, what a wonderful display. Um, 
I don't know what to say. I'm speechless. Thank you very much to the both of you. Um, do you have anything to say? Do you have anything to say? Okay, that's wonderful. And um, we'll be, this This is, um, you can find us, you can, <laughs> you can find us on YouTube. Um, our YouTube channel name is Museums That Curate to the Best of the People. Dot com dot edu slash br slash uk dot uk dot co dot gov. Forward slash archives comma two one four four one. And anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. We really appreciate your support. Um, go cancer support. Uh, go support the cancer killing. Go go support the go support the cause for which we have great honor. Thank you very much for listening to this show. We hope to see you in the next one. And um, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Let's give another round of applause to our last performers. Thank you very much. That's what it really